The F-Pace takes Jaguar in a bold and different direction and will be crucial to the brand's future if it's to expand its sales and take on key rivals. It brings a well-judged compromise of class, performance and capability to the luxury mid-sized SUV segment that provides a tempting alternative to the established German players in this sector. In short, this car was well worth the wait. Jaguar wants this F-Pace to be a class leader when it comes to driving dynamics in this segment, an objective helped enormously by its lightweight aluminium architecture. Further aids in this regard include torque vectoring to maximise cornering traction and a defiantly rear-biased all-wheel drive system that never diverts more than 50% of its power up front, a process that happens in milliseconds as soon as the first signs of wheel slip are detected. You don't have to have all-wheel drive on this car. Rear-driven variants are available with all the main trim derivations, but 4x4 traction is a necessity if you want the automatic transmission that most potential owners will probably be looking for. Change ratios for the auto box are one of the things that can be tweaked via the settings of the Jaguar drive control system, a setup that also adjusts the steering feel and the throttle response to suit the way that you want to drive. We should talk about engines. Uh, from launch, virtually the whole of the F-Pace lineup was built around a single power plant. The two-litre Ingenium diesel used in the Jaguar XE and XF models that share this car's basic architecture. Uh, it's a unit provided here in a single 180 PS state of tune. It's a frugal thing, capable in a two-wheel drive F-Pace of returning 57.7 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 129 grams per kilometre of CO2. And with two litre variants, you can also add in adaptive dynamics configurable damping for sharper tarmac handling and an adaptive surface response system which works off-road to constantly set the car up to suit the terrain you're travelling over. That's one of the things that makes this car a surprisingly capable tool in the rough. If the only terrain you care about is asphalt and you want a bit more power and you've more in the budget, then you'll want one of the top 3-litre V6 F-Pace S variants, either the 300 PS diesel we're trying here or the potent supercharged 380 PS petrol version. It says much that Jaguar markets this F-Pace as a sports car, albeit a very practical one. The stylish shape is pretty much exactly what we saw from the Coventry Company's CX-17 prototype, a car unveiled back in 2013 at the Frankfurt Motor Show. In production form, uh, the lines are just as eye-catching. Chief stylist Ian Callum refusing to be constrained by the SUV sector's usual aesthetic design cues, instead delivering a much more dynamic silhouette, with the roofline lower and closer to the road than anything else in the segment. Time to take a seat inside and check out the so-called Sports Command driving position. This delivers a kind of high-set, authoritative seating placement that SUV drivers like so much, without perching you so far up that you lose the feel of being an integral part of the whole experience. The whole cabin ambiance is designed to make anyone coming to this car fresh from one of Jaguar's saloons feel instantly at home, with the dials, uh, the switch gear and the rising uh, circular gear selector that you get in automatic models, all familiar fare. As usual in the executive segment models, the centre of the fascia is dominated by a colour infotainment screen, this 8-inch in-control touch display being the same as that used across Jaguar and Land Rover's other more recent models. Time to take a seat in the rear. Once installed, two tall adults get more headroom than you might expect the raked back roof line to be able to provide. And there's a reasonable standards of knee room too. Now, let's have a look at the boot, accessed on all models by a, a powered tailgate. It rises to reveal one of the largest luggage compartments in the mid-sized SUV segment, offering a 650-litre capacity that's 100 litres bigger than you get in, say, a rival Mercedes GLC, and a total only bettered in the sector by Land Rover's Discovery Sport. Uh, with all three rear seat segment portions dropped down, the floor isn't quite flat, but the 1,740-litre car cargo capacity provided is impressively big for this class of car. All of which leaves this Jaguar as a very tough act to fault. It's one of the standout contenders in this corner of the SUV market. That's no small achievement when you look at the quality of their competition. 
True, it might not be as rough road ready as a Land Rover product or as track tailored as a Porsche Macan. Most buyers in this segment, though, don't want a mid-sized luxury SUV at either of those two extremes. They want a car like this, a sporting SUV to savour.